This is the POF. This is chambered in 556. This specific model is their P415 Edge. The MSRP on this thing is kind of pricey. Uh, this specific one in this color, which I think is like their bronze FDE, is $2,200. In, in fact, I think their website says $2,250. I think I was able to find this at my local store for around $2,100 but nonetheless, it is a $2,000 rifle, okay? Now, for $2,000, you get a lot of rifle. Like seriously, a lot of rifle. Um, so some of the specs on this POF. Um, well, we, first and foremost, what I love about this rifle, I don't know if you can see on this side, it is made right here in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. That's where I'm from. I'm a big fan of products that are made in the USA, but even a uh -oh. bigger fan of products that are made in my hometown. I uh, didn't have the magazine all the way. <laughs> what you get for $2,000, because a lot of this stuff is extra add-ons or accessories, okay? First and foremost, you get a 16 and a half inch barrel, a very accurate rifle. We're gonna show you guys some of the accuracy from this rifle later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. Um, you do get an awesome, awesome muzzle brake. From what I understand, this muzzle brake is specifically designed for this current setup. Um, you can throw a different brake on here. I want it, unless you're gonna run this thing suppressed. Um, but if you're not, keep this muzzle brake on. It really does a great job of negating a lot of the recoil. Now, now a rifle chambered in 5.56 doesn't have too much recoil, but this does a fantastic job of taking off any kind of kickback. Um, it also kind of helps with this um, uh, gas system run very smooth. The bolt runs smooth. Overall, don't touch anything. I know they, they kind of guarantee sub MOA with this platform, but if you start changing out your gas block or you start changing out your muzzle brake, um, that may kind of throw the gun harmonics off. It may not be as accurate. Next up, you do get a 15 inch handguard. I love long rails on my AR-15s. For an AR-15 that's sub MOA guaranteed, that's phenomenal, fantastic. This thing comes with a lot of perks. Um, one, I love the detail on this gun. This is a laser engraved um, from factory uh, dust plate right here. God bless America with the flag. I love it, absolutely love it. Um, next up, this whole thing is ambi, and, and not just the, the safety. Um, you have your mag release on both sides. You also have, you can see right here, you have another little thing right here. This is your bolt release. Right there, both sides. Right hand side and left hand side. You cannot hold that bolt back unless you go on the left hand side of the gun and you, you, know, you hold out your switch to lock it. Right here, I don't know if you guys can see this, they have this little thing, a little button right underneath. Well, if I'm gonna hold my bolt back, I just press up on this little uh, button right here and it holds my bolt back locked into place. That's awesome, and then release it right there so with my little dinger finger right here i can pull the trigger release the bolt uh, re release the bolt do the magazine lock the bolt back you can do everything grips okay um trigger is fantastic this is like a three four pound trigger um, it is a little bit stiff if if i'm trying to shoot out of a precision rifle like my nemo arms over here um, that trigger is like a two pound trigger it is fantastic this thing comes stock with a pretty decent trigger it is a full drop-in um, trigger group. It is a not a parts that you have to kind of all put together. It comes as its own separate drop-in trigger mechanism. You drop it in, put the pins back in, and you're locked into place. Well, so it does have an oversized charging handle. What I like about that is, if I'm trying to rack this thing from the right-hand side or the left-hand side, um, it's there. Especially with your uh, forward assist and your scope kind of in the way, I like having bigger wings to easily, you know, grab onto that. No, no problem at all. Attention to detail is, is crucial here. If you don't have your finger on the trigger, you're not ready to shoot something, and you have your finger off the trigger, it has these amazing cutouts on both sides of the rifle. So your finger is like a little finger groove right there. Finger on the trigger, if you're off the trigger, right there. And it's a nice little uh, placement or holder for that finger to make sure that you're practicing good gun safety. Um, it's, it's the things like that that I loved about this rifle. I mean, you can expect those types of, of things coming from a $2,000 rifle, um, but not every gun has that. 
They, they just don't. They also come with on both sides, um, sling mounts right there on both the right hand side and the left hand side of this weapon. Okay, both upright. Now, some of the things that kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, usually, you don't have a solid one piece hand guard that goes into the Picatinny rail for your scopes to be mounted on. You just don't see that. Um, a lot of the times, it, uh, it, it ends right here. Here on the Barrett Rec 7, you can see that the hand guard and the rail for your scopes are separated. You can see the gap right in there, hopefully. So that means if you mount something on, on the back half or on the front half, it could be off. And then sometimes you actually have to mount a longer, bigger optic, half on the back, half on the front. Well, that's gonna throw off your accuracy. You know, this thing is just kind of uh, bolted into to the upper receiver. And uh, you can see there's a gap right there. It's not a true Picatinny rail that runs the full length of the rifle. Now on this POF, on at least their 416 or 415 model, you do, you have one solid piece all the way through. It just improves accuracy. What I don't like is that you don't have your Picatinny rail going all the way across. You do have a little uh, blurb of it here in the front. You have more than enough of it in the back, um, but you're missing some right here. Now what you can see, hopefully on camera, is you have these little holes. Um, they're actually screws, so you can screw in your own Picatinny rail wherever you need one, if you do need one. They obviously removed that to cut out some of the weight, okay? The things that I added on to this rifle myself specifically, obviously first and foremost at the front of it, I have an Atlas bipod. This is in a, in a long range configuration. I know that 5.56 is not known for shooting long range, but this thing definitely has no problem going out to four or 500 yards. And so I do have an Atlas bipod. It's a little bit heavy, but again, I'm not usually shooting this thing standing up. I'm shooting this thing prone or off of some type of bench, okay? Um, I do have a horizontal Magpul handguard and I also have a um, vertical grip. The reason why I have both is sometimes I like to kind of hold it out front more. If I am shooting with my red dot, uh, I want to have it in that position right there. If I'm shooting with a vertical grip, you know, trying to make an accurate shot, holding my recoil, you know, up against my, my uh, shoulder here, going through the scope, I, I like having the vertical grip. So I do have both. You do not need both. I'm just being a little bit excessive. Obviously on top, I do have a Night Force optic. This is a 2.5 by 20. So this is definitely more than enough glass for this caliber. So the reason why I'm not using like a LVPO, like a one by six or a red dot is just because of how accurate this setup is. I want to kind of stretch that accuracy and, and see how far I can shoot it. Um, the Night Force lets me do that for, for sure. Next thing, I did throw on a different buttstock. It had kind of a cheaper, um, skinnier, lightweight model. Um, I liked a little bit thicker of one. I don't know if you guys can see that, how thick this is. Um, because I am shooting mostly with an actual optic in the prone position, I, I like having a little bit fatter of a buttstock for, for a good cheek rest. Um, something special, this is just a Magpul one. Um, I think it's their SL5 or something like that, or SLS, I, I forget. But um, also I did throw on a uh, collapsible or foldable um, buttstock buffer tube. Um, that did not come stock, but if I have this thing suppressed, um, not suppressed, suppressed, then this is a very long rifle. Um, it doesn't fit in all my rifle range bags. And so I like having the option to fold this thing and be a little bit um, more concealable with it. Um, and it locks back into place, it locks well. I'll end up doing a review on this after I have more, more time with it. But for right now, I, I like that it works well. It it's, has a nice audible click. Uh, it is a little bit bulky and kind of heavy, but it works well for this type of platform.